This report provides an update on progress towards the 17 sustainable development goals that were set out by the UN in 2015 with an objective of reaching particular milestones by the year 2030. And it follows on from reports on climate change and biodiversity from the UN that put together paint a slightly worrying picture about the lack of progress that we're making towards solving these issues. Global CO2 emissions are following one of the most pessimistic scenarios set out by the UN Millennium Assessment, um, which unfortunately means that we've seen some very warm years precipitating a climate crisis at the moment. If we don't reverse these trends and take action against greenhouse gas emissions uh, to solve the climate crisis, then we will see uh, a reversal of some of the positive improvements towards these goals that have been made so far. So, uh, for instance, uh, global hunger and food security has been improving, but in this latest report we've seen a downturn and deterioration of this. This year we've produced the main assessment of the effects of climate change, ozone depletion and UV radiation on the environment as a UNEP panel, which comes out every four years. And our focus has been on how the implementation of the Montreal Protocol over the last 32 years has really helped us to avoid some of the most severe effects of UV radiation combined with climate change that we would otherwise have seen and hold this protocol up as a model for how the international community can come together uh, and produce concerted action in a treaty to solve a global problem. We know now that every year the ozone hole is getting smaller as a result of the actions taken to reduce the emissions of CFCs in the Montreal Protocol. Because the effects of ozone depletion are felt most strongly at the poles, high latitude ecosystems uh, such as in Finland and in the Baltic Sea are likely to be most affected by the changes in climate interacting with ozone depletion. Likewise, in Antarctica, where the ozone hole is larger, we've seen strong interactions between atmospheric circulation patterns, ozone depletion and climate. And this changes the climate in Antarctica, where we've seen effects on plants and mosses growing, on animals like penguins and seals changing their behavior because of changes in ozone depletion related to climate. We just started an Academy of Finland funded project this autumn to try and better understand how the radiation and sunlight passing through plant canopies in forests and in crops is used by these canopies efficiently uh, through photosynthesis. If we can measure this photosynthesis, we can understand both how these systems will respond to changes in climate and scale up these results, creating models on a global scale of how potential future changes in sunlight related to changes in cloudiness, atmospheric pollutants and changes in snow and ice cover which reflect the radiation will affect uh, photosynthesis and the CO2 taken from the atmosphere in the future which will feed back to better understand future models of climate change. Thank you so much.